Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Orchid Pharma Limited Q1 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mridul Dhanuka, Executive Director at Orchid Pharma Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that all of you and your families are safe and healthy. On behalf of Orchid Pharma, I extend a very warm welcome to all participants on the Q1 FY23 financial results discussion call for Orchid Pharma. Today on this call, I have with me Mr. Manish Hanuka, Managing Director, Mr. Sunil Gupta, the CFO, and Orient Capital, our investor relation partner. I hope everyone had an opportunity to see our results that we have uploaded on the exchanges and on the company website. Before discussing the quarterly performance, it gives me immense pleasure to update all of you that the company's wholly owned subsidiary in India, Orchid Biopharma Limited, had made an application under the production linked incentive PLI scheme of the government for promotion of domestic manufacturing in India. The approval has been accorded to Orchid Biopharma Limited for manufacture of the product 7 ACA for 1000 metric tons per annum. This approval will help the company in backward integration, reducing dependency on sourcing from China, and aid in improving overall margins for the business. With this PLI approval scheme, we expect to start the plant in FY24-25. The current import price of this product is USD 65. We expect to generate an EBITDA of about 10% in this business. The government PLI benefit shall be 20% of the sales price for the first four years of the business, then 15% for one year, and the last six years it would be 5% over and above the EBITDA of 10% that I have estimated. Besides this, new product development and innovation are an important aspect of our business. Our R&D is continuously working to strengthen our product portfolio. We have multiple products at various stages of life cycle of development, and I would like to update you on the status of some of those things. Septaroline development is on track. The commercial launch for this will be in December 22, and then subsequently we'll be filing the DMF for the U.S. market. Enmet Azobactam, the new chemical entity developed by Orchid Pharma, the development of this for the Indian market is on track. The CRO for the clinical trial has been finalized, and the CDMO site for formulation of this product manufacturing is also closed. Tepovetin, the third product we talked about launching commercially, will be commercialized before March of 23. And Cephazidine Avibactam will be launched in India in January 2023. So these four launches we are expecting in this financial year, and uh, hopefully these will augur well for the prospects of the company going forward. Other opportunities under development, uh, which we have not talked about earlier, are Septolozine, Tizobactam, and Cephidoropol. Patents for these, both these products expire in the next three to five years. The company is also working on several initiatives to support growth uh, of future and our focus on capacity utilization, addition, and backward integration. So two updates on this. Uh, the capacity addition in Sarai block is on track. This should come online by Q1 FY24. And the capacity addition in oral block is at detailed engineering stage. Uh, should come online by Q3 of FY24. Now I will request Mr. Sunil Gupta, CFO, to share the financial highlights of the quarter. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have uh, present result of Q1 FY23. 
I would like to say that turnaround is progressing well, and during the quarter, Orchid Pharma maintained its growth momentum on year-to-year basis. Our consolidated revenue for the Q1 of FY23 stood at 130 crore versus 92.3 crore in Q1 FY22, thus registering a growth of 42% on year-to-year basis. Gross profit for the quarter one FY23 stood at 61 crore compared to 45 crore in the same quarter last year. Then EBITDA stood at 20 crore in Q1 FY23 versus loss of minus EBITDA minus uh, 0.40 EBITDA 4 crore EBITDA in Q1 FY22. Our EBITDA margin for F Q1 FY23 was 9.5% as compared to minus 0.5% same quarter last year. The company successfully managed to reduce its losses. Our pet stood at rupees minus 14 crore as compared to compared with rupees minus 28 crore in Q1 FY22. That was the broad financial figure. Yes, now over to Chorus. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question comes on the line of Nishan Subnis with Subnis Financial. Please go ahead. Mr. Subnis, your line has been unmuted. You can proceed with your question. As there's no Hello. Response. Hello. Mr. Subnis, you can proceed with your question. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so the first question I had was, uh, uh, you know, in the previous quarter, uh, we had reported a lower loss, and um, this quarter our losses have increased uh, substantially. So even though our inventories have dropped, uh, could you please highlight on what would be the reason for the same? You are talking about March ending quarter? Yes, quarter ending March. Uh, so I think some mis- uh, misunderstanding. The inventories have increased from March. They have not dropped. Uh, and yes, you are correct. The profit has dropped because the sale is significantly lower. So Orchid needs to be looked at as a slightly seasonal business. Our H1 is significantly liar, lighter than H2. So H1 numbers would always be more subdued than uh, H2 numbers. So the right comparison would be looking at the last quarter of last financial year. Okay, so so going forward, like, do you think in the second quarter we can expect the same revenue to come in and at the same level of margin? Or would it uh, be a little better? Yeah, so obviously we are a global business uh, selling to more than uh, 60 countries. So it is subject to the vagaries of the export market. But our long-term guidance remains at 20-25% CAGR. Uh, and the margin should definitely improve. Okay. So coming to the 7 ACA which you have announced uh, for 1,000 metric ton. Uh, so just wanted to understand uh, what is the timeline which we are looking at uh, to deliver this entire 1,000 metric ton. Uh, would it be in FY24 or when would you, uh, you know, think when, when we can achieve full capacity for this? Right. So we expect to start uh, in FY24, 25. And in the first year of operation, we are expecting, uh, you know, uh, roughly half the capacity levels. And within two years' time of starting, we would be at 100% capacity. Okay, and this uh, this would get, get us how much uh, approximately? What would be the you know revenue or the total which we are expecting from this 
Yeah, so uh, I uh, uh, shared a price of roughly $65 if you calculate based on that price only because it's again a world market and competitive. So we are expecting roughly 400 to 500 crores uh, per annum kind of revenue with the bit of 10% plus 20% CLI benefit. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's all. Get back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Nikhil with SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, Nikhil. Yeah. Hi. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the improving uh, trajectory which the company is seeing over the last four five quarters. Uh, two, three questions. Uh, one is uh, on this uh, seven ACA uh, product because uh, how much of it would be our internal consumption and uh, would the PLI benefit come for the internal consumption as well or only for external sales? Uh, yeah, roughly 30% uh, of that should be our internal consumption. And uh, because it's how the PLI is housed in a wholly owned subsidiary, uh, and the transaction has to be an arm's length, our understanding is that it would come on the entire quantity. Okay. And uh, secondly, on the price of $65, uh, uh, is it like, uh, what was the price like pre-COVID? Because uh, we've seen uh, the prices of APIs and intermediary moving up post-COVID. So, uh, like uh, this 10% when you are building, is it uh, on current prices or... Has, has the prices remained uh, same over the last four or five years? Uh, no, I would say the prices have increased significantly uh, during the COVID, uh, almost more than 30%. So we expect the prices to moderate, but it depends on the competition, which is currently the exclusive supplier for this product is China. And okay. uh, uh, now uh, we would also start manufacturing. So it would depend on my market competitive pricing. But uh, I expect that because the raw materials would have also increased for China, also the costs are rising only after the COVID. They have not moderated. Uh, but uh, they are not increasing anymore, that for sure. Okay. Uh, two more questions. Uh, one is like uh, the cyclosporine uh, whole of the market was down because of COVID law. Uh, COVID induced lockdowns and everything. Are you seeing a uh, demand improving for, for the market as a whole? If you can just help us understand how is the global demand and uh, the company specific demand improving? Uh, anything which you can share? Yeah, okay, I'll answer this question. I'm Manish. I'm Manish Dhanuka. Hi, sir. So, uh, what, uh, what we've seen during the last financial year, definitely there was an improvement over uh, 2021. Um, however, you know, uh, during this financial I would uh, financial year, I would say that first, it's slightly difficult to predict because uh, uh, what we have seen in last three years, the first quarter is probably the weakest and first half is weaker than the second half. So um, uh, obviously we've done much better than the first quarter of last two years. So we are seeing positive trends. And if the same trend continues, then we could say that uh, the demand is growing in antibiotics. Okay. And last question. Uh, uh, in the previous two calls and meetings, we had mentioned about uh, customer addition in Europe and one of the customer addition in US who was applying for site transfer and also where are we, how are we progressing with the uh, customer addition any more uh, uh, any more incremental news or information that you can share? Yeah, the customers, uh, we, we are adding a lot of samples have been submitted. I think in the, uh, one of the calls we announced that uh, not only to Europe, we actually to China. So one very significant customer in China got approval for uh, one of our products, the Pegzine. And uh, we have made around 10 crores worth of, uh, almost 10 crores worth of export to them. At the same time, uh, the U.S. market, which, uh, which had virtually closed for us due to shutdown of our, one of our old customers, that, that uh, we are expecting to open very soon. We finally of NDA based on our raw material. And we are hoping to get orders for U.S. market as well. And... Uh... 
So lastly, sir, our last plant uh, inspection was in 2018 or 19. Any anything you are hearing in terms of inspection? Uh, last inspection was in 2019. Uh, generally, they come after two to three years. So uh, we are preparing ourselves for inspection during this financial year. Um, but uh, as we all know, due to COVID, there is a, a very big backlog with most of the agencies. However, we are inviting European agency on our own to get our inspection done. But USFPA generally does it based on their own priorities. So it is difficult to say when USFPA will come. Okay, fine. Thanks a lot, sir. I'll come back in with you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Amit Kala with GD Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Can yeah. you hear me? Hi, Amit. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is based on the capacity utilization in the quarter one for uh, sterile and oral overall. So, uh, yeah, Amit, what I would like to say is that, as I said uh, in the answer to earlier question also, we we have seen the trend that first quarter the sales are rather less, the demand is less. But as the quarter uh, goes, I mean, as we move to second and third quarter, the demand improves. So uh, based on uh, our uh, experience, uh, this experience, we are now running the plant at about 80% capacity, the sterile plant. Uh, because it is a it is a long manufacturing cycle, and we are trying to build stock so that we can increase sales when the demand comes up, comes up in third and fourth quarter. And uh, the oral would be running around you know 60 to 70 capacity, demanding uh, depending on the current. Capacity. So you can say I mean current capacity overall utilization would be around 70 to 80. Okay, thanks. And uh, the next question would be. Like, could you give us an explanation of about uh, how you will plan the capex to be utilized under the PLI? So PLI, uh, as Mithul said, the government has made provision for two years to set up the plant, and we expect to set up our plant in that two-year period. And then we would like to run it at full capacity. Um, as per our estimate, you know, this uh, the current demand in the country is around 2,000 tons. And uh, selling this 1,000 tons within India should not be a challenge. And the capex uh, is expected to be between 300 to 500 crores. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, so lastly, uh, if you could provide me some revenue breakup on basis of geography, like which are your most contributing geographies, and also uh, break up on the basis of like uh, regulated oral and emerging oral and emerging sterile. Yeah, so uh, uh, Amit, actually the geography wise break up we don't provide, but uh, our long term guidance remains similar. You know, uh, two third of the business uh, comes from uh, you know that, that split between oral and sterile. So two third is oral, one third is sterile. And uh, between regulated and emerging markets, the split is roughly uh, now it is 60% emerging markets and 40% regulated markets. Okay, thanks. That's it from my side. I'll get back in the queue. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Vijay Parikh with Carnelian Asset Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, Madhu. Uh, good evening. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, so, this, uh, since we are going to be captively consuming the seven ACA uh, for okay, this is close to thirty percent. Have you worked out what kind of uh, improvement in margin it would give for the uh, the holding company? Uh, actually, uh, Vijay, because of the transfer pricing rules, it has to be down on an arm's length basis. So whatever will be the market price for Orchid, let's say I uh, benchmark it against the Chinese price, it has to be the same price to Orchid as to any other customer. So Orchid may not have a direct benefit, but uh, any of that margin will upflow from the uh, on the console basis. But the supplier, I would just like to add that the supply uncertainty and the inventory management would definitely become easier. 
Correct. Uh, so uh, on the two other questions, uh, probably ones which we've been answering for the uh, last financial year. One was about the end met as a back team. Do we see have, do we see any royalty in the quarter one results? Or do we see any royalty coming in in FI twenty three for end met as a back team? And secondly, uh, how is our debt reduction plan looking? Uh, I mean, where are we in the on the timeline basis on that? Uh, with respect to NMET as a back term, first news should come from China by end of this year. That was what we had said earlier. That's still our expectation. And also, hopefully, within this financial year, we should see the USE. This is only a, I would say, my estimate based on the activities which are going on. But uh, no certainty I have around that information. And the second question you asked was the debt reduction. Yeah, the debt reduction plan, uh, you know, our term debt was down to 140 crores. So by end of this year, it should be uh, down by another 50 to 80 crores. All right, all right. I'll just squeeze in a last question uh, if I get in line. So uh, how is the demand scenario in Europe and US? You are facing some kind of short-term headwinds in Europe. So how is the demand scenario there? And your opening remarks, you mentioned uh, a few uh, commercial launches in India, uh, Sesta, Dizim, Avibactil, and um, one other drug, which is probably not getting the name right now. But apart from that, do you have any commercial launches in US and uh, Europe as well in the current financial year? Yeah, uh, what will happen, which is this, which is launches, Septarolin was the product I talked about first. So when we launch in India, basically that is a product produced for validation for US and Europe markets, wherein based on those batches, we'll be filing the DMS. So these were earlier products under development in my last presentation. So now we have visibility on when we, we have arranged the raw materials and we are planning the commercial launches. So launches will start from rest of the world or emerging markets. And for regulated markets, based on that manufacturing, we'll be filing validation batches and DMS. It will take six months from roughly commercial. All right, all right. And in terms of the demand scenario in Europe and US? Yeah, so like I said, the, the first quarter has gone better than the first quarter of last year. So we are expecting that uh, overall demand for export should be higher only. Uh, However, I think all of you are aware the first quarter in India was quite bad. I mean, all pharma companies suffered. The antibiotic demand was relatively less in India. Uh, we, we expect from this quarter onwards that will also improve. But in exports, we, we face reasonable demand, and the, that's the reason of these results in first quarter. All right. Thank you so much. I'll get back in line. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Nishan Sabnis. With Subnis Financial, please go ahead. Hi, sir. One more question. Uh, so, how have we seen over the last uh, two, three quarters, uh, you know, the raw material pricing? Has it softened, or uh, how much? By how much has it dropped or increased in the last few quarters? Yeah, roughly, if you compare, uh, you know, the gross margin. Uh, so, I would say roughly about five percent to be a loss when compared to uh, last year, so June. But if you see, uh, you know, from March quarter, the gross margins have improved slightly. That's largely due to the fact that, you know, being a B2B supplier, there is a slight lag in terms of when the actual price rise we are able to pass on to the customer. So I would say uh, our overall impact on our margins is about 5%, out of which roughly 2% we have been able to pass on to the customers uh, or claw back from, uh, let's say, the customer. So uh, it's safe to say that we're not holding any inventory at higher prices from any previous quarters. Uh, we, uh, I, I would say that we uh, produce about 60% of the uh, production is done on actual order basis, and only 40% of inventory uh, we maintain. But some of the contracts are long term, so I, I don't expect to have any loss on account of inventory. The only uh, the only possibility of loss that happens is in the ROW market, and there we do not maintain much inventory, so we don't expect that. To okay, so this 40% inventory that we are holding is, you know, what what is the time frame that we look at, like in terms of time, like is it like one month? Nishant, that depends on product to product. 
uh, orchid is, for example, I've already shared in the past, we have the widest range. Some of the products we produce only one campaign a year. Some of the specialized products maybe two campaigns a year. So it depends on the fast moving products, I don't have any shop. So it depends on product to product base. So generally, like we explained last time also, we have a campaign of two tons. We may manufacture two tons. If we get an order of say 6, 700 kg and our forecast is two tons for the year. So we manufacture two tons and you know, 600, 700 kg gets liquidated immediately. And then, then the balance will probably sell over the year, over the whole year. So because of that campaign uh, strategy, we have to keep that inventory. But la last two years experience is it gets liquidated within the financial year, mostly. Okay, so and uh, coming to our uh, forex and volatility in the prices which are happening, uh, what is our strategy for that? So we are naturally hedged there because our exports are more, much more than our imports. Uh, so we don't see much of a risk in that aspect. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question comes from the line of Amit Kala with GB Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, thanks for the opportunity again. So what I want to ask was that as a company, what is our ambition to reach the better target for the next three years? Uh, Amit, uh, our uh, you know stated guidance is that 20-25% Kager and high teens EBITDA. And uh, but when I said that earlier, since the last call, we didn't have the PLI. So I have shared some broad guidance on the PLI numbers. Uh, you know, as progress and investment start happening, maybe we'll have more details on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Last. Thing. So what is the target of debt reduction for this fiscal? Yeah, so our term debt from 140 odd crores would go down to less than 100 crores this. Okay, and do we foresee any uh, requirement for capital like for uh, CapEx or anything else in the coming fiscal year? Uh, yes, so uh, there is an announced capex of 50 odd crores for the expansion of uh, one of the Sterai blocks which we have announced earlier. So that uh, work is going on. And the other one for the, again, for the PLI scheme, we have already given you very broad number right now of uh, 300 plus crores. So as things progress, we will come back on uh, how that is going to be funded and things like that. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions in the queue, I would now like to hand the conference back over to Mr. Medul Dhanuka for closing remarks. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining us and the insightful question. I hope I have been able to answer all your queries. In case you have any uh, further questions or require any further details, you may please contact uh, us or Orient Capital, our investor relations partner. Thank you so much for joining this call. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Orchid Pharma Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.